before we begin, today's video is brought to you by my new Marvel Clips channel. If you like Marvel and want to stay caught up on news and breakdowns while also getting your fair share of lore, check out my Marvel Clips channel. I'll have a brand new video going live pretty much as this one does, and we really want to put a ton of effort into it. So if you like Marvel and only if you like Marvel, it would mean a lot for the support. With that being said, roll the intro. The build-up to the Clone Wars is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting parts of Star Wars Legends, especially looking at how both sides got their massive militaries, militaries large enough, of course, to span a war across the entire galaxy. The logistics of creating a military ready to fight from day one at Geonosis were extra difficult, given the fact that the Rusan Reformations, in Star Wars Legends at least, seriously prohibited shipbuilding and the size of warships. In today's video, we'll We'll discuss how the CIS managed to build tens of thousands of warships without attracting the ire of the Republic. So one interesting aspect of the CIS is that although the actual political side of the Confederacy was made up of tens of thousands of star systems, the military was largely provided for by trade unions, corporations, and business conglomerates. And really it seems like a few of these shipbuilders seemed to provide the backbone of the Separatist Navy, especially early on in the war. That's why sometimes you hear the Munificent, for example, referred to as instead the Banking Clan Frigate. These major entities, through advantages they held in production or supply were uniquely placed to build ships in secret. So let's talk about that. One of the most famous Separatist ships during the Clone Wars was of course the Lucra Hulk, the massive Trade Federation battleship. The backstory of how these vessels were prepared for war was really fascinating. So, the Trade Federation was using Lucre Hulks far before the Clone Wars as simple transportation vessels. That's how they were so large, but managed not to get caught under Rusan regulations. Sure, they were large, heavily armored, and had a fast hyperdrive, but originally at least they didn't have weapons on them. Nor did they even carry starfighters. However, the Plagueis novel shows how the CIS essentially took their ready-made fleet of powerful vessels and converted them into warships without anybody really noticing. The immediately pre-Clone Wars Republic was seen as largely corrupt, toothless and incompetent. That's not only how Palpatine got elected, but also something the Trade Federation honed in on. They used the insecurity in shipping lanes alongside Republic failures in recent conflicts to appeal to the Senate, who allowed them to not only put light weapons on their warships, but also to carry weaponized droid starfighters. Now, after the invasion of Naboo, the Trade Federation was supposed to disband their fleet, but they didn't really probably because Palpatine was the head honcho for the Republic at that point and could make things like that go away. Anyway, by the time of the Clone Wars, not only did they have a massive fleet of powerful and fast vessels, but one that had already begun being upgraded with full weapons. As the Clone Wars progressed, not only were more ships in the fleet fitted for combat, but existing ships underwent refits to become even more powerful. So when it came to the Trade Federation, they essentially transformed what had been a legitimate and viable shipping business into, well, a massive problem for the Republic. That's just one vessel within the fleet, though. I think my favorite in terms of lore has to be the Banking Clan frigate. Have you ever noticed the full name of the Banking Clan? It's the Intergalactic Banking Clan. That implies that they had business not only within the Star Wars galaxy, but also outside. Now, there's some lore stating that they had small outposts in companion galaxies, but the Essential Guide to Warfare actually adds something even more interesting. This is a direct quote. The Banking Clan owned a number of space stations outside of the galactic disk that housed secret vaults, communications facilities, and meeting spaces. In the run-up to the Clone Wars, many of those extragalactic stations were refitted as shipyards and staffed by workers toiling in lonely exile above the bright wheel of the galaxy. Those shipyards and others on IGBC-affiliated worlds, such as Gwari, 
turned out tens of thousands of banking clan frigates for Dooku's cause. I've always loved the idea of hidden shipyards in the unknown regions or even extragalactic space, and it makes even more sense in the lead up to the Clone Wars. And it also parallels the buildup for the Republic fleet, and really the Republic military in general, which was being literally grown on Kamino outside of the galaxy and assembled in hidden shipyards like the one at Rothana. The Lucre Hulk, which we just mentioned, had roles beyond that of simply a large capital ship. It could obviously move supplies, house droid armies, and more. The Banking Clan Frigate, or the Munificent, also had functions beyond that of simply a warship. It was designed, of course, to move material, but also had some of the most advanced sensors and communication equipment in the entire galaxy. This really helped the CIS on a logistical front, helped them communicate effectively in battle, and according again to the Essential Guide to Warfare, even played a part in broadcasting a steady stream of propaganda to Republic worlds while also disrupting Republic communications and sensors. Pretty smart how they built this ship with multiple functions in mind, then pumped out tens of thousands of them. The Essential Guide to Warfare also has an interesting profile on the Commerce Guild Destroyer, which you may know as the Recusant. According to the text, it wasn't something like the Munificent or the Lucre Hulk, which was either built in advanced or converted from existing ships. Rather, the Recusant had the benefit of being extremely simple to produce. And I mean, that makes sense if you look at the vessel. It's essentially a simple superstructure, a very large cannon, and some extra guns. It had the benefit of being operated mostly by droids and automated systems so you could skip on many of the essentials that would be required for organics. The material sure was prepped in advance but really recusant started being produced as the Clone Wars broke out. Again, as the Essential Guide to Warfare says, the Commerce Guild didn't have a massive military infrastructure. It had the materials, which were actually then put together by the Techno Union to produce a fairly effective vessel. I think it's really interesting how the CIS used the benefit of different corporations together. The assets of one corporation being put to use by the production facilities of another corporation. This was likely the case in a lot of the CIS's ships and starfighters. The factories, the forges, the mining, the shipyards, they were already there simply converted very quickly as the first vessels were able to contend with the first vessels of the Republic. And of course, once the war was in full swing, the CIS was in a good position to outproduce the Republic or at least keep up with competition as their droids and tacticians were being outfought by the Republic. Super weapons like the Subjugator were uniquely built, while other ships like the Providence were also created during the war, but still kept that CIS ingenuity. The Providence, for example, was heavily modular and could be customized depending on its needs. Other pre-war commercial CIS vessels would have too been upgraded for wartime use. And just general, I think the way that the CIS militarized and were able to fight a galaxy-spanning war against a dominant government is very interesting. Just my thoughts though, what do you guys think about the CIS's wartime preparation and their pre-war prep as well? Do you prefer as a faction the CIS or the Republic? Let me know all of that and more down below. Thanks so much for watching guys. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.